Hi, Pam. What do I say? Do I even? Oh, jeez. Don't tell me. I know what it is. Hi, and welcome. What am I painting? Roses. <laughs> hey, in this video, I am going to be showing you how to paint a loose watercolor rose like this one. So we're going to be going over the basic shapes, brush strokes, how to mix your colors and lighten your values um, for a loose watercolor rose. So get excited. It's going to be fun. And let's do this. Bling. Can you do like a magic wand yeah. sound? Yeah. Cool. Because I'm actually a magician. All right, so before I actually get started, we have a couple fun surprises for you at the end of this video. So make sure you stay tuned and watch the whole thing because at the end of the video, we're gonna be announcing some sort of giveaway situation. Um, and there's some free downloads and free classes that you have to get on because they're gonna blow your mind. So stay tuned for that, watch the whole thing. But let's first obviously talk about this whole painting a loose rose thing. So the supplies that I'm using are the supplies that I always use for watercolor. I am predominantly, predominantly? I'm predominantly going to be using my size 16 round brush um, with a touch here and there from my six, 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 size six brush. Um, all of the supplies that I use are linked in the description below. So if you don't have these and you wanna check them out, check out the description below and you can find all the links to the supplies directly there. Um, but uh, whenever I paint roses that are like that size, like if they're really small, I'm not gonna use the size 16 brush, I'm gonna use my size six. But for this size, what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna be using, excuse me, I'm gonna be using my size 16. So um, those are the two, the two brushes I'll be using. And then I have my full travel palette with all of my Windsor Newton colors. I'll be using mostly Scarlet Lake, some touches of Burnt Umber and Mars Black, a little Opera Rose, and I'll be calling out the colors that I'm mixing with as I do that. Um, I don't have anything like pre-planned in my mind right now and I'm not referencing a photo. I'm just really comfortable with these loose style florals. Um, and a, a thing that I get asked a lot of the time is how I gather inspiration before I paint or like what if I reference a photo. Um, when I'm painting loose style florals, I'm mostly just referencing a specific color palette and a shape. So for these roses, I'll get into it in a second, but we're really just gonna dissect the shape in a second of the rose so that you feel comfortable on your own painting a rose, a loose style rose, without having to reference somebody else's work or a photograph of a rose too closely so you can just kind of whip it up once you have the muscle memory really down and you practice it a bunch. Uh, it's pretty easy to just pick up a brush and start painting these flowers over and over again with ease. Next is my paper. I always use this Legion paper Stonehenge Aqua Cold Pressed. Again, it's linked below. I don't use hot press paper. I use cold press paper. Maybe we'll do a video on why sometime in the future, but not now. Um, but I use cold press paper uh, for watercolor because the texture is nice. Two cups for water. One cup is to rinse off any colors that are in the red, pink, orange family. And then another cup is for like the blues, greens, etc., purples, etc. Anything that's kind of like blue tone. And then over here is red tones. Um, so that if I already only use one cup of water and I mix red tones and blue tones together, I'd be mixing contrasting colors and it makes brown water. So for now, when you keep them separate, you're just basically gonna end up with red water and blue water if you keep it consistent. So if your water starts to look muddy or brown, I would refresh your water, get some clean water, and just keep painting. Um, I typically don't need to change out my water throughout a piece. Uh, it's just like at the end of a few pieces, I'll change my water. Um, but that's because I'm really consistent with making sure I don't put red in the blue cup and vice versa. So, let's start with painting some roses. We're gonna actually start with dissecting the shape of a rose. So I'm gonna pull up this finished piece and talk about it for a second. 
So I kind of give you my method to my madness, madness um, for you. There is a method to it and it will make sense. It will still be difficult if you're new to painting the style. It will be difficult at first to feel comfortable. So just make sure you stick with it and keep practicing because that's all, I know it's annoying to hear, but that's really all that you can do in order to get better is practice, practice, practice and develop that muscle memory. So when looking at a rose, if you were to pluck a rose off a rose bush, let's say, um, and you were to pull that rose off and put it directly below your chin, so you're looking down at the face of the rose, you would be seeing, if it was a bud or a new rose, you'd see a ball, basically. Most flowers start as a sphere or a ball um, before the petals start to peel away. And then as the petals, or as the rose starts to grow and the petals start to fall away, they're still connected at the base but the tips of those petals are pulling away. Um, and if I'm facing or I'm looking down at the rose like this, I'm seeing a circular shape, a spherical shape, because all of those petals have to point back to where they're growing from, which is the stem. So if I were to pluck each and every petal off that rose, I would have a cone-shaped petal with the tip of the cone or the base of the cone attached to the stem, because all of these petals are connected at the same spot, they're growing out of the same stem, so you really have to think logically about how you approach a loose style or a realistic style, a floral painting. Um, these petals are all coming back from to, or all pointing back to some spot on that flower, and that is the stem. So, for example, on this rose over here, if I had a C curve that was kind of tweaked a different angle, um, kind of pointing off over here and not back towards the center, then that wouldn't make sense. It would look like it's from a different flower and it doesn't shape the overall rose shape that it needs to. So essentially with a loose style um, rose, you wanna make sure we're gonna basically be painting with a bunch of C curves that follow along this circular shape and overall circle shape. So right here, right below the center of this flower is where um, the stem would be. So if I were basically holding the stem underneath the table, that's where it would be. Um, so all of my C curves need to kind of form around or point back to the center of the flower where the stem would be. And it's an imaginary stem right now. We can't see it because the, the petals are covering it. But you definitely want to make sure that let's, for example, take talk about this petal. If it were tweaked and pointing that way off to over here, that doesn't make sense. The center of the flower is here not over here. So you wanna make sure that as you form your loose roses, that all of your petals kind of hug that center or where the ball originates um, all the way around the rose. So we're basically, if we were to connect all of these C curves, it's like we would start with this tiny little circle and start to unravel and get bigger and bigger. Um, we're following that circular motion with C curve petals, just getting thicker in width um, for each petal and lighter in tone or value. So we're gonna go darker towards the center and lighter towards the outer rim. I don't really have a reason for that, just darker centers and lighter outsider, not outsider, and lighter outside petals just kind of makes it look like it has depth or it's kind of rounding and it has like fluffy fold shape. Okay, so if we have the same tone, the same color, and the same value for all of these petals on this one rose, it would look totally two-dimensional and flat. But because we have a darker center, some petals are more red than others, some are darker red, and some are more pink, and then the lighter petals, or the outer petals are more light, it gives it dimension and volume and movement, so it's not just so two-dimensional and flat. So make sure you're mixing it up, and I'm gonna be showing you how to do that as I start painting, and I'll be talking about it. But overall, the method to my madness is following that circular shape with the inside unraveling and still following that circular shape as we get to the outer petals, and also making sure I'm pointing every single C curve back to the center of the flower. And then from the center, I'm pulling out darker and thinner petals, C curves, and getting thicker and lighter as I get further away from the center of the flower. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and we are just going to be painting from a blank sheet of paper and I'm going to grab my size 16 brush, my size 16 round brush. The reason why I use round brushes predominantly through um, water, floral watercolor is because of its two-in-one quality. So I can flip it on its side like this 
and I have a wide stroke. I can use the belly of the brush for a wider stroke. And then when I flip it up ver uh, vertically, straight up and down, it gives me a nice fine point tip to the brush. So I can do thin strokes and thick strokes. And depending on the amount of pressure I put on either of those, um, will give me also different widths and strokes. So I can have a thin stroke just a little bit wider if I put pressure on it, or really, really thin if I put little to no pressure on it. So it's an awesome brush. You don't have to constantly be changing out brushes and using a flat brush and then a fine liner brush or whatever. So I love using round brushes because it, it really caters to painting quickly in this loose style of painting. So I'm gonna start with loading up water on my brush so that I can load up with a really full amount of Scarlet Lake. And I'm gonna come over to my Scarlet Lake in my palette and I have my brush uh, tilted at about 35 degrees so that I can soak up Scarlet Lake on the full tip and belly of the brush because I'm gonna be using the belly and the tip of the brush, not just the tip. And I don't wanna just use straight up Scarlet Lake so I'm gonna kind of Go over to my opera rose a little bit and back to my Scarlet Lake. I'm very type B, so I'm not concerned about making a mess. <laughs> and this will wipe up for me um, if I add water and just soak it up with a paper towel. So I'm grabbing a little bit of opera rose, touch more Scarlet Lake, and maybe a touch of Mars Black to make it darker towards the center. All right, so now I'm ready to start with my first rose, and I'm thinking about this shape, like literally, and then if I were to keep going, um, literally unraveling this sort of shape with C curves um, and breaking it apart with white space so it looks like individual petals. So I'm gonna come up here to the top left side. I've got my paper horizontal. This is, hor yeah, horizontal. Um, you can do vertical or whatever uh, orientation you want. So I've got my brush at a 35 to 40 degree angle away from my paper. And as you can see, the belly and the tip of the brush have pigment on it. It's not just the tip from here down on the brush. And that's because I'm gonna be using the full belly of the brush. So first I'm gonna start with those inner petals and I'm making sure to, I'm applying just a little bit of pressure and I'm not using it vertically because that would give me a really thin petal um, there. So I'm just making sure to kind of form these C curves C-curves around the center circle, which is imaginary, but it's right there. That's where the, the stem would be directly underneath. So my inner petals are a little bit closer together, um, and we have a mixture of both thicker looking ones and these thin uh, C-curves where I'm just putting little to no pressure on my brush and bringing it around. But as you can see, I'm making sure to follow the same circular shape. If I were to have a C curve that went like this around here where the edges or the tip end, ends of the C curve were pointing off over here, that would make no sense. They all have to point back to that um, little center situation. So I'm just kind of flowing around this circular shape and now I'm going to my water and lightening my brush just a little bit, the color on my brush, and getting thicker with my strokes. As you can see, I'm leaving a little bit of uh, white space between each petal. Some areas are touching, other areas are open or where there's this white space. Um, that is to show different sections or petals um, so it's not just one big red blob. I'm gonna go back into some of these petals with a dry brush and soak up some of the pigment just so we have a little bit more fading going on. You can also use a paper towel for this. And then this is kind of looking like a triangle so I'm gonna come up here and give a petal up here.
And then from here, I'm gonna grab my size six brush and I'm just gonna go over and layer on top of some of this section to make it pop more and make it a little bit darker. With some Scarlet Lake in Mars Black. And in areas that are still wet, I'm just kind of poking in some of this darker hue to show depth. And then maybe make some of these areas a little bit pinker. And then from here I'm going to move on because this petal is still wet. I want to see a bleed from this flower to the next flower. Maybe I'll make this one a little bit more pink and orange. So I'm grabbing off a rose and a touch of cadmium orange, red, and a touch of black. These areas where there's little um, blobs of color landing, I like to soak up because those are the areas that will dry with hard lines around them, kind of like spider webby looking things. Um, it's gonna happen up here too, so while it's still wet, I'm just gonna kind of go up and blend it before it dries. You just have to watch for that kind of stuff as you're painting. Okay, so now we're just gonna do one more flower kind of over here. So we've got three little goodies. Making sure they don't all have the same hue. Um, so they're slightly different in hue and shape. We can kind of pull this petal out here. kind of pulling these side strokes out. And darkening. some yellow and add some of that here. Blend 
this a little bit better. And then from here, we can go in and fill in these gaps with leaves. So if you're not comfortable with leaves, make sure you go back to my video, my three-part series on leaves. Um, I show you exactly how I use round brushes to paint leaves in one stroke. So it would be really helpful if you clicked that. We'll link it in the description below so you can go and watch that and practice your leaves. Um, but basically I'm just grabbing sap green on my size 16 brush with a touch of Mars Black for this darker green tone. And same thing with my stems and leaves, they all need to have an originating spot. So they're all pointing back to where a stem would be. So there's gonna be a stem connecting these petals, these petals, and those petals. It looks like this flower is kind of facing that way to me because the um, eye of the flower, if you say, if, if you will, um, is angled up that way. This one is pointing that way, and that one is pretty much dead center. So I'm gonna pull out the stem would be kind of like right there, the main stem would be. So I'm gonna pull out from the center of that flower and add a leaf right there. And then from there, I'm just kind of adding leaves that point. Back to where the main stem would be making sure I'm changing up the hues and values just slightly so these leaves are also not all the same color and lightness or darkness. I'm doing really like gestural strokes for these leaves. I'm not getting overly obsessed with having a perfect shape to them. But again, if you want to learn how to paint these loose style leaves, make sure you go watch that video. And let's pull this Whenever I lighten my colors, I just go to my water cup and swash it around and release pigment. Added some brown to this leaf so it's a bit more sagey color. So I'm making sure to step back and stop myself before I get too carried away and overdo it with these stems and leaves. Um, and I'm kind of just assessing the shape as I go. I don't want to have two high points. Um, I wanna make sure that I have a couple different points where people can be led to. So I have one high point over in this corner being stretched to the opposite corner um, and then also bouncing over here. So we don't just have these two these two high and low points pulling us in a perfect slant, uh, but I have one, two, three. And then this one is kind of just a rounder point because it's a rose. Um, but yeah, and then I'm making sure all my leaves, all my petals, 
etc. are different values. So some are darker, some are lighter, um, and different hues. So some are more green, some are more like brown, sagey, some have more black in them, etc. Or these petals have some yellow in them, these don't. So make sure you're really thinking about how to switch it up uh, in terms of hue and value so that it, it gives more interest to the piece, it gives more volume and depth, um, and it makes these flowers really pop. Okay, so I'm just putting the finishing touches on these leaves and roses and brightening areas or darkening areas that need a little extra pop or adding any final leaves where I see some major gaps that are lacking. Um, but that's essentially it. We're again following that overall shape of a sphere or a circle, making sure all of our C curves are pointing back to the center of that flower or circle. Um, and we don't have a C curve that's tilted off to the side or pointing in a weird direction. Making sure all of our C curves kind of are overlapping each other in, in some areas, but also leaving little bits of white space so it doesn't feel too claustrophobic or just like a big red blob. One thing that I do wanna point out that a lot of beginners do when they're painting these loose style roses for the first time is they'll make their C curves really arched, um, like severely arched, and it will make kind of like this puffy cloud look. So make sure to flatten those arches on your C curves so that they look like smoother petal curves and they're not too like popcorn-y cloud, kindergarten cloud um, type shapes. So smoother, flatter C curves, um, touching and overlapping each other, and then also making sure that there's little slits or gaps of white space so it shows different petals. And then you're good to go after you add a couple flowers, start poking in your leaves, and keep taking steps back so you don't overwhelm the piece uh, and add too much onto one piece of paper. Um, but keep practicing this. This is all about muscle memory. So if you're like, this looks terrible, it looks like a big old blob or a puffy cloud, I get it, I've been there. I've literally had puffy cloud roses. Um, if you scroll really far back on my Instagram, you'll see them. So just make sure you stick with it. You'll develop that muscle memory and train your eye to see the overall shape. But just remember, always point back to the center of the flower. Whatever type of flower you're painting, your petals gotta grow from somewhere. So make sure you're pointing back to them. Okay, so now we're to the fun part, the giveaway. To enter in to win this piece that I just painted, this trio of roses, um, you must comment below with how many roses you think you've painted in your lifetime. And if you're like, I literally just painted my very first rose of my entire life, then it's one. But comment below with a guess, it doesn't have to be right, obviously we wouldn't be able to prove that, but just comment below with how many roses you think you've painted in your life, and we'll select randomly a winner of this piece, and we'll ship it off to you, and everybody's happy and lovely. Make sure you like this video and you subscribe. You will not be able to be entered into the giveaway if you aren't doing both of those things and comment below with the amount of roses you think you've painted in your lifetime. So those three things, comment below, like, subscribe, all right? And then check the description. Obviously we have links to supplies, but we also have a free ebook download, my free, uh, or my floral watercolor beginner blah, blah, blah intro to floral watercolor ebook that you can download Faux free, here it is, thank you John. Um, obviously this is printed out, you can print it out if you want to, but it has a little section on color theory, it has step by steps of a rose, um, basic shapes, and step by step of a loose peony, etc. and some leaves. So make sure you click that link in the description to download this free ebook and also, we have a free video course. If you were like, how do I get this stuff from paper to a computer screen, etc.?" I have a free video course that if you're wanting to get your work onto products like car greeting cards or yoga towels, I have some yoga towels over there with my work on it, etc. I have a literally a free video course for you linked below where I show you my exact process for scanning editing in Photoshop and creating a repeat pattern um, in Photoshop. So you can scan this, these three roses or whatever you wanna paint, scan it, do some little editing, get rid of the paper background that's really pesky and annoying, I show you how to do that. 
and then how what tools I use to repeat this and create a pattern. So you could put it on pillowcases, on bedding, on you can make a wallpaper for your desktop, whatever. The, the options are endless, really. So get on that. Both of those things, the ebook and the free video course, because I love you guys. That's why I create this free stuff. And, and you know, it's changed my life. It could change your life. Who knows? Give, give back to the world. The end. <laughs> um, <laughs> can I end it like that? <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you loved painting these loose flowers. I hope you loved painting these loose roses with me. Please post your work on social media, tag me. I'd love to see what you're working on, what you're practicing from these tutorials. And then again, make sure to watch that uh, tutorial on leaves if you need help with leaves and check out all the links below because blah, 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 blah. Stay tuned for the next video.